Welcome back, everyone. You're watching This Changes Things, the show about what's happening in business, brought to you by American Express Open, helping you get business done. Let's talk a little bit about side hustles because they've become, well, the norm in the growing gig economy as people look to make a little extra money on top of their nine to five. But what happens when you turn your side hustle into, well, now your main gig? Leaving the comfort of your job to start a new business can be intimidating, but as our next guest knows, it can be well worth it. Joining us now, Rob Wiesenthal is the CEO and founder of Blade. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Before, Again. Yeah, yes, I know. But before you, you decided to branch out on your own, you spent a, many years as an executive in the music industry with Sony, with Warner Music. When did you know the time was right to say, you know what? I don't want to do this anymore because I think that my calling is to do something else and start your own company. Well, I, I think that in the world of entrepreneurs, I am probably considered geriatric <laughs> in terms of my age. Um, so uh, maybe a little bit of a different path than for most of your uh, viewers. But uh, I was at Sony from 2000 to 2012, 2013. And uh, the, I'd worked from the beginning with the CEO of Sony of America who became chairman and CEO of Sony globally, and I eventually became head of corporate development for Sony worldwide. And as he was transitioning out, I thought this was a great time to think about what I wanted to do next. And I wanted more of an operating role, and that's when I was afforded the opportunity to become uh, COO of uh, Warner Music Group. Um, but in between that period of time, I said, well, you know, what about incubating a company? Mm -hmm. I had lots of ideas. They were unrelated necessarily, but linked to entertainment, and uh, with a small amount of capital, I went out and I hired a very small core team to basically incubate the idea, but really pressure test the market to see whether or not this was a viable business. And what I found was, you know, we had the fr my first year at Warner's, it was doing okay, and then by the second year, it was so clear to me that uh, there was an, a great market opportunity that I made the decision to transition to this position, to leave my current position at, at that time, Warner Music, and to become CEO of Blade because of that opportunity. Okay. So it's a little bit different than kind of, wasn't really starting the business right. side. I designed it, you know, came with a business plan, brought the right people in. All right, you, you brought up the term geriatric. All right, and it was a huh. well, I don't think you are. I think Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're 51 now, right? Whatever. Starts with a five. Oh, starts with a five. <laughs> five. Another number. The other two doesn't matter. Um, but you know, it is a concern for some people in, in, later on in their life to, to start yeah. over again. It's harder. You've had the privilege of leading such great international companies like Sony and Warner as yeah. well. Um, and look, you look at Evan Spiegel. He just turned 27. He's a billionaire. Mark Zuckerberg started his company at 30. Good for them. Right. Good for them. <laughs> but for people who may be a little bit more mature in their professional career. Yeah. What advice would you give to these folks in order to get them, I guess, out of their comfort zone and out of that fear that they might not be able to, to yeah. make it later well, on in life? Yeah, you may have heard of uh, the entrepreneur, Mort Zuckerman, a big real estate guy, and also uh, I'm definitely a mentor, big in New York City in terms of real estate, owns the New York Daily News. Uh, he said, once I turned 35, I never got beyond that. And I believe I kind of stopped, got to 35 and I stopped counting. Um, that being said, I think that you know there's some benefits for starting later. Obviously, you have a better sense for what your skills at, your skills are, your core competencies, what you're good at, what you're not good at, and you also have the ability, hopefully, to have some capital to put to work, uh, so it doesn't have to be all sweat equity. I think some of the problems some of the younger entrepreneurs uh, have is that you, you can bootstrap some some things, but if you're trying to get full-time employees. Um, to, to believe in your idea and help you incubate an idea, you can't just pass out equity because, as someone right. once said to me, you can't eat equity. But, All right, you have to pay them, and you're going to have to feel that sense of value uh, from them to get them and, motivated. And I think that goes to building like the good like company corporate culture. So let's say you have decided to take the leap, as the same way you did to our viewers out there that have already done that. How do you instill that good? corporate strong culture within your employee and you have the network too after decades yeah, the in neck different case, industries the neck case you'll be able and we to build. really view there's a lot of the dna of entertainment which we'll talk about in a little bit within blade and that's why people say well how'd you go from entertainment to aviation yep. i've uh never left entertainment a lot of our product is creating that emotional connection with 
uh, a flyer, you know, a great movie, as I was taught by, I think, people like John Calley and Amy Pascal, I worked with for years. Great movie tells a great story, a great song tells a great story, and we tell a story through the entire process of a flight, from the digital booking to the lounges to our CX team to the way it's decorated to so your in-flight, which is kind of like our you know, our, our second act, mm -hmm. uh, and then keeping that story and narrative alive, and that's how we built a brand, and brands are important to me, brands are important to Sony, to Warners, uh, and uh, so it kind of it kind of fit in. Right, and as you were going through each of those steps and processes, it's clear you take a lot of pride in the details of your business. Correct. Every little detail coming out, even with the design of the outfits for the yes. staff. Yes. Um, why is it that these things are so important to you? I think that, look, to start out, you're talking about corporate culture and everything, I think it's up to the founder to have, to create that, to spread that DNA of what your real idea is. And our idea was to bring back a level of enhanced aviation that hasn't existed since the 1960s. Mm -hmm. a level of personal service, a level of excitement. When I was when I was growing up, my parents dressed me up to get on a plane. It doesn't really work that way anymore. Aviation turned to transportation, and it would be much easier to do what we're doing with Blade in short distance aviation than say to do it with United Airlines. Okay, uh, you know, small companies have an ability to win. Small companies have an ability to transform, to move quickly, and try to implement ideas that others you know, may not want to do it because I'm um, fond of say, saying the status quo never likes to lose its status. And there's a lot of status quo in these big companies which make, them, make it difficult to innovate and to move quickly. Well, when you think about not just big companies but big industries, something like the aviation industry, this is not a company that's changed very rapidly. I mean, you're coming in, in a way, disrupting you know, the status quo for the aviation industry. What do you really see as the next five to 10 years, the sort of evolution of that particular yeah. industry? Well, I think, look, 75% of all blade flyers have never been in a helicopter or seaplane before. We expanded the market, we really didn't cannibalize it. Mm -hmm. and, I think, and I think that what we did was we essentially uh, made it more accessible, less intimidating, and lower cost. Lower cost by crowdsourcing, lower cost by scale, less intimidating because of digital booking process, lounges, people who are personable. Uh, the, and the, the next phase for us is not only just general expansion, but we're, we have a working group with uh, Uber to explore what they call eVTOL, mm -hmm. electric vertical takeoff and landing rotorcraft, which are essentially in certain aspects yeah. helicopters with fans that are quiet, cheaper, and one of the biggest impediments to increasing our TAM, our total addressable market, are places to land. Yeah. And noise is that factor. So as we move to those new types of aircraft, there'll be more and more uh, right. opportunities to land, increasing a market, reducing costs. Uh, that's the big, you know, issue here because they don't all have to be loud and they don't have to be too expensive. But that's going to take time. That's yeah. the five-year roadmap. And we're out of time today. we got to have you back on, though. It's great to I'm see ready. you again, as Thank always. You. Rob Wiesenthal, he's the CEO of Blade here on this Changes 